Hey Arceus Nation, Almighty Arceus here. With the release of Pokemon Sun and Moon less than two weeks away, I'm extremely excited to start my journey in Alola. There are so many cool new and redesigned Pokemon that are going to make this game so fresh to play. So I thought I'd take the time to lay out my team members that I want to have in Pokemon Sun. And yes, that's the version I'm choosing to get. Make sure to tune in on November 18th when I will be live streaming my playthrough of Pokemon Sun. With all that being said, let's jump into my six picks. Number one, Decidueye. So you gotta start with the starter, right? I've been on hashtag Team Rowlet since the very moment he was announced. This extremely adorable egg-shaped dapper owl is actually the only starter Pokemon that is dual type in its first stage, which makes it extremely unique. What I'm happy with is the fact that when it evolves into Decidueye, it changes from grass flying to grass ghost. This makes its dual typing much more creative and versatile, as opposed to grass flying which has a lot of weaknesses. I remember seeing this design in the leaks months ago, and at the time, I thought Decidueye's design was too awesome for the leak to even be real. Lo and behold, here we are, and we have, in my opinion, one of the coolest starter designs of all time. From its Robin Hood hood with feather accent at top, to the bow and arrow it makeshifts with wing, vine, and feather, Decidueye has an aesthetic to that of a sharpshooter. If I end up with a male Rowlet, perhaps I'll nickname him Legolas, after the archer elf from the Lord of the Rings. If female, then perhaps Katniss would be an apt nickname, referencing the girl on fire from the Hunger Games. Competitively, I think Decidueye will be a fast attacker, with stat specialties and attack and speed. Although this limits the viable move pool for Decidueye substantially, you could see some very cool movesets paired perhaps with a good hidden ability. For my Decidueye, there's a few different sets I would choose. For my in-game run, I'd choose the moves Spirit Shackle, Leaf Blade, Roost, and Night Slash. Two of those moves have high critical hit ratios, so pairing them with a possible hidden ability of Sniper or Super Luck would make this moveset hit hard against opponents. That being said, having high critical hit ratio moves regardless of ability can really help give you that extra edge in playthroughs. Competitively, I'd probably go with Spirit Shackle, Will-O-Whisper Toxic, Roost, and Leaf Blade. Spirit Shackle simulates the ability Shadow Tag without actually having to have that ability, which is absolutely marvelous, especially if Decidueye ends up being a fast attacker. While it won't prevent the opponent from switching out before getting hit, there will definitely be some cool strategies for keeping it in. For example, you could pair Spirit Shackle with Will-O-Wisp or Toxic if Decidueye is able to learn those moves, and force your opponent to stay in and take damage. Roost allows for repeated healing while letting your opponent suffer, and Leaf Blade is there for stab coverage and critical hits. Decidueye is an extremely exciting Pokemon, and I think one of the best in recent years. I look forward to having Decidueye right by my side on my team. Number 2. Wimpod's Evolution So let's be real here, Wimpod was a Pokemon that we almost forgot about being released for Pokemon Sun and Moon after all. This bug water type had an interesting ability called Wimp Out that automatically switched it out if its HP dropped below half. That ability will certainly be convenient for training low level Wimp Pods up more quickly, but besides that, not really much to it. Then the data mine occurred, and with it came this as of yet unnamed monstrosity. I mean, just look at it! Eight limbs of terror with huge claws, a fearsome face, armored body, and overall just an epic appearance. Clearly designed to be a counterpoint to the wimpy nature of its Silverfish pre-evolution, Wimpod's evolution looks like it will tear things up on the battlefield. And if my speculation comes true, it certainly will be a force to be reckoned with. I'm gonna call this evolution Exapod, derived from Exo like Exoskeleton, Exa like Executioner, and Pod from Isopod. I want Exapod to remain bug water because we only have one other evolutionary line that involves that typing combination and that's the Surskit Masquerade evolution line. Plus, it looks like Exapod might actually be able to take advantage of this great typing that it is. Water Bug neutralizes the bug weakness to fire and the water weakness to grass, and gains five resistances to water, ice, fighting, ground, and steel, with only two weaknesses of electric and flying. With a significant boost to bulk and attack, Exapod can be a marvelous fighting force. I see Exapod as having good attack and defense stats. I think the primary ability for Exapod will be Intimidate, as emphasis on how intimidating of a Pokemon it has become. This ability will work excellently for its defensive capabilities in a playthrough and in competitive play. A possible hidden ability could be Compound Eyes to increase the accuracy of moves like Megahorn or Hydro Pump, or Anger Point 
seeing as this Pokemon is pretty fearsome after all. For my playthrough, I would equip Exapod with Aqua Jet, X Scissor, Crunch, and Waterfall, with leftovers as an item. Aqua Jet lets me get a priority stab hit on Pokemon weak to water, and can make it easier for me to get out of lower level battles quickly. This attack will also be good for finishing blows to the opponent. X Scissor is a powerful, high accuracy bug move that he just has to have. Crunch I imagine will be available, and while it won't add very much coverage, it is a strong move that will help me battle NPCs in game. Waterfall is a strong physical water move that I imagine will be a staple on Exapod in the future. I don't anticipate keeping in Exapod for electric or flying types, because Exapod I imagine will be relatively slow. Competitively, my moveset would stay close to the same, with Aqua Jet, X Scissors, Bulk Up, and Waterfall or Earthquake. Based on designs like this that have been released in the past, I don't anticipate very good recovery options, so I'd have mine hold a leftovers. Aqua Jet gets a good priority hit off of strong Pokemon such as Exapod. Bulk Up plus Aqua Jet could be a great combo, especially for a late game setup, as I imagine Exapod will be able to tank a lot of hits and build up stats that way. Then Aqua Jet can clean up the rest of the opponents waiting for me. X Scissor is there for a powerful bug stab move, and Earthquake has a possibility to deal with electric types and just generally grant me more type coverage for Exapod. The two things that could undermine Exapod would be poor special defense and status conditions. For special defense, I could max out the special defense or give him an assault vest and replace bulk up with power up punch, but that could take away from recovery options. There's not much I can do for status besides play him later in game when it's less likely that he'll get hit by a status condition. All in all, Exapod looks like an epic Pokemon, and I'm extremely excited to use him in game. Number 3, Alolan Ninetales. From the minute this Pokemon was released, I knew I'd be using it. My goodness is Alone in Ninetales gorgeous. Such a mystifying design and creative new typing instantly incentivized me to use Alone in Ninetales, and it was a great one to show off the creativity of Alone forms of Pokemon. I mean, at least a little bit more than Alone in Doug Trio, or worse. Ugh. I wanted to try and avoid using the obvious nickname for this Ice Fairy Queen, Elsa, so I'll let it go and try something a little bit more majestic, Aurora. We've had Aurora Beam for quite some time now, and I've always thought it would also work well as a Fairy-type move, considering Auroras are very magical looking and form from radiation from the sun hitting the Earth. Maybe having Aurora Beam become both an Ice and Fairy-type move would be a fun little addition in this generation that would be fun to run on Alolan Ninetales. If this is the case, then in-game I'd give my Alolan Ninetales Aurora Beam, Nasty Plot, Blizzard, and Shadow Ball. I'm banking on Alone in Ninetales having the hidden ability Snow Warning for this one. Otherwise, I'll replace Blizzard with Ice Beam for accuracy's sake. A dual type Aurora Beam would get so much good stat bonus and be a fun novel move to use on Alone in Ninetales. Nasty Plot allows it to get its special attack up quickly, and with a decent base speed stat, this makes Ninetales a huge threat. Blizzard with a boost will likely be able to one shot a good amount of Pokemon, and a boosted Shadow Ball for coverage won't be bad either. I'd probably use a similar set for competitive play, with Leftovers as my item and Snow Warning as the ability. I could also see a Scarfed or Spec set up here with Ice Beam and Energy Ball. Or perhaps Alone in Ninetales will retain more moves than we're thinking, allowing it to keep Flamethrower in its arsenal. That could add some much needed flair and coverage to its set, allowing it to check its 4 times weakness to Steel types. All in all, I'm excited to see how Alone in Ninetales will fit into my team in Alola. Number 4. Salandit's Evolution Salandit has been a fan favorite since it was announced, thanks to its unique typing as predicted by True Green 7 Fire Poison is a new typing that we have never seen before, which means we could see some pretty cool new move possibilities. Its new ability, Corrosion, allows it to poison all types of Pokémon, including Steel, which has up to this point been immune to the poison status condition. This gives it a cool competitive edge that other Pokémon do not have as of yet. I also absolutely love his sleek design. He looks exactly how I would have pictured an evolution of Salandit to look, with its signature features still present from its pre-evolution, and still retaining that dark color palette to keep the imagery of a thief up. A good name for Salandit's evolution could be Reptilian, a combination of the words Reptile and Villain. I see Reptilian as a mixed attacker with good attack, special attack, and speed stats. For my playthrough set, I'd probably vary his moveset substantially, with Flamethrower, Sludge Bomb, Crunch, and Poison Jab. 
Flamethrower, Sludge Bomb, and Poison Jab are there for stab power, and Crunch is there for coverage against Psychic-type Pokémon. I imagine Reptilian will be a great counter to a bunch of different Pokémon, and a strong ally against many Pokémon we face. It's a wonderful check to Steel, Fairy, Grass, and Bug types. Competitively, I'd be sure to take advantage of Corrosion, with Toxic, Venoshock, Flamethrower, and Crunch, or Poison Jab. Toxic can land on every Pokémon, so I don't need to worry about a Poison or Steel-type absorbing the hit, and Venoshock causes double damage on poisoned Pokémon. The only detriment to that is that it seems that only Poison status moves will work on Steel-types, not damaging moves, but the plus is that it gives me a 120 base power stab Poison move, so long as I use it against a poisoned Pokémon. Flamethrower and Crunch give more coverage to Reptilian. I imagine the popular item to use with Reptilian will be an Air Balloon because of its 4 times weakness to Ground-type attacks, and Earthquake being ubiquitous throughout the metagame. So long as Reptilian is fast, it'll have a much easier time on the battlefield. Plus, you won't want to keep him in for Ground-types anyways. <laughs> I'm very excited to see this sneaky reptile in action. Number 5. Como-O Ever since we found out about Zheng Mo's existence, I've known that A, he'd be the premier dragon of this generation, and B, that I'd want to put him on my team. He has an amazing ability with Soundproof that makes sound-based moves miss. That makes Como-O a hugely viable counter to strong fairy types like Mega Gardevoir and Sylveon, who have Pixelate as their ability and use Hyper Voice to take out foes. Though you still probably won't want to put Como-O in on a Moonblast or any sort of fairy type, it's still four times weak to fairy type moves. I love the form that the evolution has taken with scales resembling bells and armor, and based around the Komodo Dragon, one of my favorite lizards of all time. Likely being a pseudo-legendary for the upcoming Alola region, I'm excited to see this guy take down foes on the battlefield. My in-game moveset and my competitive moveset will likely be the same for Komo-O in order to take full advantage of his power and moveset. I imagine Komo-O will be a physical attacker with some moderate bulk thanks to those armor scales. I'd like to see Komo-O with Dragon Dance, Drain Punch, Dragon Claw, and Poison Jab, with Leftovers or a Roselli Berry as an item. Having a Roselli Berry may allow it to take a Fairy-type move, letting it set up a Dragon Dance and follow up with a Poison Jab. Drain Punch allows for a nice stab recovery option with a solid amount of base power. I've always preferred Dragon Claw to Outrage because it didn't lock you into a move choice where a Fairy-type can set up on you. This set makes him a solid physical attacker, and one that I'm very excited to try out in competitive and on my team. Hopefully Como-O makes my sweeping dreams come true. Before we move on to my final pick, I just wanted to put in a quick plug for someone who wouldn't regularly make my in-game team, but one I'm super excited to see in doubles competitive play. That Pokemon is the Fighting-type Passimian, and I am so excited to see how its ability Receiver works in doubles. Receiver allows Passimian to receive the ability of an ally that faints. It's basically Trace, but with the cost of an ally fainting. Imagine having Mega Metacham come out on the field, do some damage while Passimian sets up a bulk up or agility, alternating with Protect and paired with Leftovers. Then, when Mega Metacham faints, Passimian acquires pure power and wrecks things. Now imagine that, but then pair it with having already Baton passed into receiving Eevee's Extreme Evo Boost. Wow, <laughs> this guy could be a powerhouse in doubles. I do hope Smogon allows that ability without banning it because man, that will make Passimian awesome to battle with. Anyways, let's move on to my final teammate. Number 6, Silvali. It may be a botched version of yours truly, Arceus, but Silvali still deserves a spot on my team. With the ability RKS system that has once and for all cemented the pronunciation of my name, which up to this point was unconfirmed officially, Silvali is able to change type based on the item it holds, called Memory. This allows it to be any of the 18 types that currently exist in the Pokemon universe. The versatility that this allows for Silvali is magnificent, and this also means that his move pool is going to be enormous. I'm thinking of either using a Steel, Psychic, or Ground type Silvali for my playthrough, for some type coverage for my team. This means that the movesets will be varied for each of these forms. I'll also probably rotate types throughout the game depending on what I need. A good mix set of moves, since I imagine he will have a high base stat total all around, could be Multi-Attack, Earthquake, Iron Head, and Recover. Multi-Attack gives me the item base stab attack, EQ works well for a ground type Silvali, Iron Head for Steel, and Recover allows it to heal mid-battle after taking a lot of hits. Competitively, there's going to be a ton of variety in Silvali. I can see someone using it as a more powerful physical Rotom Wash as a Water-type Silvali with Multi-Attack, Scald, U-Turn or Volt Switch, and Recover. 
I don't think Silvali will have that many status boosting moves, so this moveset anticipates that absence. Still, Silvali will be able to hit hard while also having great recovery moves similar to that of Arceus, and will probably be able to last long in battle. I'm super excited to get this Son of Arceus on my team. Well, there's my 6 picks for Sun and Moon. What are you going to pick? Leave a comment down below of your team. Make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you like content like this. I'm Almighty Arceus, thanks for watching, and don't forget to tune in on November 18th to see my run-through of Pokemon Sun.